welcome to the 67th episode of the Friday Nightmares podcast. Today we'll be, we'll, we will be talking about Indonesian horror. My name is Heather Powell, your basic white bitch of horror life. And I'm coming to you from day, today from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. I just wanted to try to have an intro because now I'm going to introduce Scott. And well, we all know what's going to happen here. Take it away, Scotty. Hello, everyone, and coming to you. Wow, I just screwed this all up. Hold on. I was about ready to introduce the show. <laughs> <laughs> My brain is fried, people. Keep, it, right. keep it in, though, Scott. No coming, editing needed. Uh, coming to you from the town of Swartz Creek in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the Western Hemisphere, on the planet Earth, in the Milky Way galaxy. I'm fully vaxxed, boosted, and waxed, and ready to climax. And if you can, please get me wet and feed me after midnight. I'm the man with the glorious beard, a.k.a. Mother of Cats, a.k.a. The man with the humongous ego, a.k.a. <laughs> Scott Housen, a.k.a. Still the retaining champion of the Hungy Belt. I am Smoke Show, and I'm better than you, and you know it. And he's in your mom. <laughs> <laughs> So for anyone who hasn't listened to us before, I suggest going back to listen for episodes one to 66. So any of this makes sense. (laughs) We are definitely a podcast that you can't come in midway. You have to start fucking season one, episode one, which I absolutely hate doing with with TV shows. I I just want to join when the series got good. I don't don't want to join at the beginning when they're still figuring shit out. But I mean, but Heather, we should, we should not tell the listeners when to come. Oh, they, that's should, right. they should come in whenever they want. That's right. I forgot. We are definitely a freedom of choice podcast. <laughs> My mistake, Scott. <laughs> I need to keep building that inclusivity. Funny story. So I was listening to our episode like a typical narcissist does. Um <laughs> So the reason I listen to the episode is to see how cringe I sound to see if I can sound better the next time. Um, I I don't. But anyway, I was going for a walk with uh, my dog and my friend's dog. And I went down this new trail and I got lost listening to Friday oh, right. Nightmares. And it almost became a fucking found footage film. <laughs> it was like I was recreating Blair Witch Project because it was in the woods. And there was one part. So my friend's dog's a Mastiff Lab Mix. She's a, she's a big yeah, girl. Big, a big girl. Yeah. So Scott's met her in person. She's big a, booty hope. She's a big dog. So we were walking and I heard something in the bushes and both dogs turned and looked. And I thought, well, nothing's going to really fuck with us because Hope's so <laughs> large that whether it's a coyote, a person... The Blair Witch, I don't know, whatever, Um, the Blair Bitch, it's not going (laughs) to fuck me up. So I was pretty safe. But honestly, that has kind of been the most exciting thing that has happened in my in my life as of late. Uh, I am going away to Toronto this weekend for work, going to check out a Blue Jay game. Staying in a five-star hotel that work is paying for because I got nice. a, recru- a recruitment event. So Scott and I are recording this bitch early, and it's probably going to be one of our shorter episodes. But we're trying to keep it short and sweet, much like our sex lives. So, um, <laughs> except for Scott's dog, that's massive. <laughs> no, no, that's just short, not sweet. It just, it's just, oh. it's a little guy. Little guy. <laughs> He's doing his best, you know. He's he's new and he's trying. You have a little he's, button for him. He's like a little guy McDonald's. that could. He's a little like, man that could. Can you know what like McDonald's used to go in? They'd be like, "I'm new and I'm trying." They'd have buttons. Oh yeah, you should get one for your cock. Yes. <laughs> the first time I'm you're with trying. someone, you can be like, "Look, this is my first time." I love telling people that I'm a virgin. I I can't get away with that shit anymore because I'm too old. <laughs> but when I was younger, I used to convince people I was straight edge and that I never had sex before and like oh yeah it was great wow <laughs> yeah i would just i don't know i'm just a horrible human being tim davis is right like you know tim davis from horror for dummies like he refers to me as that rude bitch and um was that him or daniel not... that referred to you that way oh no I, yeah it's probably daniel i'm just making it about tim and tim's like what it wasn't me <laughs> upset right now and actually then he'll forget about it records for for dummy because he has to take care of his 18 billion kids <laughs> right um, and, and we have watch wrestling and forget to watch wrestling and we've had a nice chat group going with J- dave c as of late shout out to dave c 
uh, the I always fuck it up. The horror, the what is it? Exploding Heads Horror Movie yeah. Podcast. Yeah. I always leave out movie because I'm like, isn't it just horror? Why do you have to it, say well, everyone's movie? Well, we always refer to it as exploding heads. So I mean, it makes sense. Why we forget because, that? Because uh, that's what we want. We want some exploding fucking my, heads. Don't my we, head's Scotty? always exploding. Actually, Scotty, you got something big coming up, don't you? I do. My vacation and my <laughs> birthday. That's right. <laughs> Scott's gonna have birthday sex. Birthday sex with himself. With myself. <laughs> With myself. <laughs> you open up porn up, you're like, which video is gonna bless me today on my birthday? <laughs> I'll have five going at once, be like, make it feel like I'm in an orgy. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I I enjoy me some porn hub. I was looking at some porn earlier today. And um, but I prefer when the guy's going down on the girl because that's what I like to fantasize is happening to me. But sure. I know what you like. I know what you're into. It's Phil Ray. We're, we both oh, hell fantasize yeah. over Phil, Phil Ray. We I mean, I got personal videos picture. that I've uh, <laughs> taken to Phil Ray when he wasn't paying attention. When to he was sleeping. <laughs> Just walking I'm around watching Brazil. you. I don't even know. Does, I wonder where he lives in Brazil. We should maybe he shouldn't tell us. Actually, maybe <laughs> maybe, maybe Phil, you just keep that. You keep that to your Fine. Grave, Keep right? your secrets. <laughs> keep you. <laughs> Oh, Phil, keep your secrets. Anyway, <laughs> this is a horror movie podcast. If for some reason you've jumped into episode 67, uh, we're not talking about pornography, but I don't know. We could one day. I don't know. Scott review and I are the, open. View the five top, film, uh, five, five top Pornhub videos. Oh, man. I would have to get extra batteries for it before we did that. I need extra sure lube. <laughs> I know. Make sure we're all done up. But anyway, your birthday's back to you and your birthday, Scott. So your, <laughs> your birthday is coming up. Are you doing anything special over your vacation? I know the answer, but I'm sure yeah. everyone's dying to know. Yeah, I'm going to be going to Mackinac City for a couple of days. Uh, Mandy and I just hanging out. and uh, I'm going to go to Mackinac Island as well. Just kind of kick back, relax, just get away for a bit, you know, and just, you know, enjoy the time away. Get some food, you know, check out some shops or whatever, and then coming back and then i'll probably do some like spooky season stuff uh, i'm gonna try to go see terrifier see, Scott, two. is it spooky season it's spooky <laughs> it's, it's it's spooky season <laughs> but uh i'm gonna try going to see terrifier 2 either thursday or on my birthday very nice and very uh nice. yeah i'm just gonna kind of just chill for the next couple of days like chill for a couple of days after that and just you know relax it up and just enjoy a vacation and then on uh then pretty much you know, this could be kind of a very chill, relaxed vacation compared to what I'll be doing in February. So I just want to enjoy uh, it. Or what about what you're doing at the end of October, Scott? Wow. Well, well the end of October, wow. the end wow. of October is not truly a vacation. It is just a weekend getaway, but it's going to be fucking amazing. It's like a vacation because every time we get together, Scott, it's special for me. I mean, it, I didn't, absolutely. Didn't know it wasn't special for you. <laughs> oh, Heather, you know it's special as he hell for me, so... Don't even go there. Scott and I are going to do a pumpkin carving contest with Scott and I. And, and if any of my friends decide to join us and guaranteed Scott's pumpkin's going to look way better. Unless George does one because dude's got fucking mad carving skills. Even Anne. Oh, then our, Scott and I will look like the dumb pumpkins that like a five-year-old oh, did. I, I am terrible at carving pumpkins. <laughs> I mean, for one, how does someone use their penis to cut like that? I don't get it. I've been trying and trying, but it just doesn't work. I, I, did you say try to cut your penis? You... No, no, I said, how does someone use a penis to try to cut a pumpkin? I don't get it. I've tried it so many times and it just, I keep bashing the pumpkin skin. It just hurts. Uh oh, I think we lost to Heather. This is this is happening. My internet connection is unstable. Oh, wow! I, like Wait, your there you are. You're back. Am I back? I, you, well, you're kind of back. Your video is still frozen. Okay, well that's fine. You don't need to see me. Oh, there you go. That's okay. You said my internet connection was unstable, but I kept talking, so it'll be really interesting when you listen back and see. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll be curious. <laughs> I'll be curious to see who was talking. Was was it you or me? Because I, I was know. doing because I was doing the Jeopardy theme song on my end. <laughs> Waiting oh, for you to right. come back. I, was, I just thought I was going to start my own solo cast. <laughs> I was just fucking freestyling it, Scotty. Yeah, um, I fi I figured I just killed you with my uh, using my penis for a pumpkin carving tool. Oh joke. yeah, well I said it'd be interesting with Anne and George's reaction when you pull that out. That should be <laughs> that should be fun. Yeah, we don't usually record. I might turn off my video because it's definitely not that. 
anyone else fucking needs to hear about this but um it's it's definitely the internet's yeah, I don't know. Must be all the porn that people are watching in my neighborhood. Damn Canadian internet. Tell you what. Okay, right? Well, I Tell usually interrupt. What. I usually interrupt you, Scott. So as long as I can see when you're talking. <laughs> I mean, it worked out perfect. Worked out anyways. Right? Um, but no, I hope you do have a nice vacation out in Mackinac. Hopefully the weather's good and you have lots of fun and you don't end up filming, you know, Blair Witch 2. Oh, well, I mean, at least be better than Blair Witch 1. <laughs> you're like, you can only go up from here, Heather. You can only exactly. go up from here. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we should jump into these 2022s. Um, you know, Scott, I really like how you introduced this one to me, how you met this, the way you talked about it to me, the description <laughs> you gave. So I'm going to ask for you to inter- to introduce it because I think it's actually quite funny what you said. All right. So yes, we will jump into our 2022s. We got a decent size list this time. Um, but yeah, the other one that Heather is referring to, we both watched it, but uh, The Invitation. So this, I'm not even going to go with a synopsis, because this is, this is Lifetime movie meets vampires. It's <laughs> literally, oh, uh, not so well off lady runs into beautiful <laughs> English lord. They fall in love. <laughs> then she finds out beautiful English lord is actually evil vampire, and she disowns him and runs away. And I just <laughs> wait for them to meet back up in the rain and embrace and start kissing and make up all over again. Yeah, and- this movie's so good. You guys gotta watch it. It's so good that every single person we know gave it two stars or two and a half stars on <laughs> their <laughs> including Rob Hungry, which is hungry, which isn't a surprise because lo- Rob doesn't like joy. <laughs> and this probably reminded him of love. And all I know is I keep throwing myself at Rob and he keeps rejecting me every single time. But Scott throws himself at Rob and all of a sudden, everybody wants Scotty. Everybody but, wants uh, a piece of that Scott Crawford. They do. I don't know. It must be the beard. Or the raging Scott Crawford I have. And they're like, oh, those, those lips can suck some cock. <laughs> Like, ooh, that beard tickles the balls. I, love <laughs> I can it. grab onto it and get a good grip. Anyway, that sounds more entertaining than the invitation. So, um, Scott, yeah. like, I don't know. You set this up really well, Scott. <laughs> it's a yeah, lifetime if you, film. If you basically like Lifetime movies with uh, vampires, that's just go in expecting that because that is exactly what you're going to get, just with a higher budget. Right. It's it's Like, just the costuming's a, good. The acting's fine. It's just the story is blah and very, very, very basic. Oh, it's very predictable, but the steely blue eyes by the main gentleman in it, by uh, Thomas Dordery. Dordery. Oh, my steely blue eyes. I'm um, the English Lord, milady. Yes. And, like, all the other, like, it's, this is just a movie full of hot people. So if you want to watch a bunch of good-looking people for, like, I don't know, an hour and a half, it's great. Um, I'd rather, it, I'd suggest you watch porn. Yeah, you could just watch porn where they actually, you actually see stuff when they bang. Mm. Um, you know what? I, I, it was an easy watch. I will give it that. Um, I am glad I skipped the theater for it. It is a 105-minute runtime. I would say, um, I don't know, if you have someone that's kind of lukewarm to horror movies, but they also like a lot of romance and cheese, then maybe this for them um they, yeah if you decide to get it it's available on itunes voodoo amazon um or prime is for order you you don't get it like with prime you have to pay for it um, microsoft store and cineplex i was waiting for microsoft office i know don't worry the, the show is still young <laughs> So that is the invitation. Uh, we're going to jump right to our next one because it was also interesting. Um, this movie is called He's Watching. He's, the, in- o- he's the only one that should be watching. <laughs> it's a 95 minute runtime. Um, what to say, what to say. Um, a pair of happy-go-lucky siblings left alone while their parents recover from an illness play a series of pranks on each other. The game becomes nightmarish when they realize something sinister is watching them and it wants to play too. Uh, this was a movie that overstayed its welcome by 35 minutes. Yep. And it should have been an hour. It actually could have been a short film and an anthology, and it probably would have been just as effective. Yeah. Um, it's a shame that it wasn't, actually, because this was a very, it, it was challenging to sit through. They thought they were being really artsy and creative at times, and it ended up just being boring. The kids are fine. This looked like to me like a parent project. Like it was like literally like this family was like, we're going to make a movie. And we're going to put our kids in it. And I will give them, you know, an A for effort here. I, I think that takes guts to put something out there. But I didn't even find it a good found footage film. I found it boring. I found it um, 
lacked in any kind of suspense. I, I didn't find it scary. I thought it was just stupid. I thought it was played on the pandemic a little bit too much. Uh, but you know what? I, I guess you got to start somewhere. And hey, not everyone's first film is the best. So, you know, right. hopefully they learn from this. I don't know, Scott, is there anything you want to add? Like it's a 2.3 rating on Letterboxd. So obviously other people liked it, just not us. Yeah, I was going to say, this was just very mediocre. And yeah, what you said, it stayed as welcome way too long. It yeah. tried to be like, ca- create these like scenes that were supposed to be like nightmarish yet artsy. And they made no fucking sense with the movie at all. Like I had no idea what the fuck was going on. And just, yeah, yeah. I just, this, was this movie could be summed up with no one knew what the fuck was going on like the premise was good it should have been an anthology short yeah like there was a, one that came out last year about the two little kids that get left behind during oh, yeah. COVID-19 and they have to escape two very scary people that movie that is not a great anthology and that wasn't necessarily but it was perfect as a short it would like if they made that into a full-length movie right It was basically the same concept, to be honest with you. Two people get left behind that are kids and they have to survive. Only those kids were really young and they, and you were rooting for them. Like you were really hoping like these two kids, you were like, fuck, I don't give a shit what happens to these two assholes. (laughs) Right. Like, fuck, can we just end this goddamn film? But for some reason you decide this is something that you want to expose yourself to, you're a found footage completist and it's something that you need to add to your collection. It is available on iTunes, Google, Vudu, Microsoft Store, and YouTube. I really don't think it's worth a rental, but if you are a found footage completist, completist, then watch at your own risk. Maybe you'll like it more than Scotty and I did. Yeah, I just found it boring. Yeah, and just like dry and yeah, anyway, I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's their first attempt. Hopefully they make other better films. Now this one, um, yeah. Yeah, Scotty, all right. You so recommended the, it to me, didn't you? I, I did. Yes, you did. All right, so the next one is a Shudder exclusive called Speak No Evil, and it's a Danish film. A Danish family visits a Dutch family they met on a holiday. What was supposed to be an idyllic weekend slowly starts unraveling as the Danes try to stay polite in the face of unpleasantness. I found this to be uh, very well acted, very well shot. Uh, The story had my attention the entire time, and I felt very awkward and incom- uncomfortable during certain situations mm-hmm. that kind of gave me one I, I brought this up before in another movie but kind of gave me funny games vibes a bit mm-hmm. um Dave unfor- Bailey's all like spoiler guys shut up Dave. <laughs> um unfortunately uh there are some decisions characters make that I disagree with that they should have done something differently but you know that's a horror movie for you but still yeah solid fucking movie yeah, I, I agree. I'm glad you recommended this one, Scotty. I, I do think it is fairly paint by numbers in a sense, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was great. I think the acting in this is really good. I think the uh, the question of politeness is raised frequently. Mm-hmm. Um, uncomfortable social situations in, you know, what do you do in those situations? And you know, for a 97 minute runtime, it didn't overstay its welcome. I, I personally wish Shuddy picked this up. I don't know why they didn't. This is a total, no, oh, it is. is. Yeah, I, was Shutter. Say Shutter. I said Shudder. Yeah. This is silly. I, see, I didn't, I don't have it on Shudder. My apologies. That's oh, why. you don't? Oh. No, I don't think so. Um, or just maybe I haven't, I haven't seen it on there. Maybe it's because I watched it the screen. through other means. <laughs> yes. And maybe that's why I just haven't searched for it on the Shuddy. Um, I'm glad Shuddy picked it up. This is a total Shudder movie. Um, Scream Shudder, actually. Definitely too hardcore for Netflix. Too good for Prime. Um, Shudder's where it's at, or it would be, like, let's be real here, or it would be video, right? Now, there are yeah. some things on Prime or AMC Plus, and we'll get to that. I think it's AMC Plus um for one of the films that i think makes sense it's an a20 no it's an iafc midnight film the other one i'm talking about oh, okay um, this one though is great it's it's great storytelling if you like slow burns that in my opinion pay off this is a movie for you what do you think scott do you think it's the slow burn that pays off yeah i was definitely gonna say like this that is a good point to bring up because it, it is a slow burn but like it there's stuff happening like throughout mm-hmm. the film that just makes you just like want to see what happens next yeah and it pays it off and there's a payoff to it total payoff to it yeah i really dug it so as we said it is on the shuddy uh prime and regular shuddy and it's on amc all the different amcs i i definitely if you have shutter i don't know why you wouldn't watch this film right um totally worth it i it may hit your it may be on your list this year um there was you know other films that came out other years that are similar to the flavor of this and this may be something that does it for you 
Um, so yeah, definitely strongly out of all the ones we've talked about so far, this is probably the only one I recommend. Yeah, so far, okay. yes. But then the next one that I've watched is going to be a high recommend. Mm, for me. I know you better bring that in, bad boy. In all right, so uh, I just gotta say, 2022 theaters fucking killing it this year. There have been some bangers. I know this year. the invitation fucking... was so good. I know that. Well, you gotta throw, you gotta have some turds to get to the gems, you know. That's true. That's true. But uh, this is definitely one of the gems. It is the uh, prequel to X Pearl by Ty West, starring Mia Goth. Mia Goth. Uh, trapped on her family's isolated farm, Pearl must tend to her ailing father under the bitter and overbearing watch of her devout mother. Lusting for a glamorous life like she's seen in the movies, Pearl's ambitions, temptations, and repressions all collide in the stunning Technicolor-inspired origin story of X's iconic villain. Uh, this... Holy shit, this movie was incredible. It is, uh, when I got out of the theater, I was like, wow, this is really good. I like this. Then it's been sitting with me and sitting with me, and I fucking love this movie. I think I like it more than X now, where before Ooh. I thought it was about just a little under X or right on par, and now I think it's above X. Um, mm. Mia Goth's performance in this, fucking incredible. Like, nice. I would say Oscar worthy in some scenes. Like, it, she does an amazing performance. Um, found out she also uh, co wrote the script with Ty West for this film. As That's a, pretty cool. Yeah, as well as acted. And it is beautifully shot. Like, yeah, like it said in the synopsis, it's Technicolor. So it just has like that old school vibe to it. Like, it's just beautiful, bright, vibrant, and almost kind of feels like a, a demented uh, Wizard of Oz like look to it. Mm. And yeah, it's just to see something like that, something like this in theaters and just like seeing X in theaters and Barbarian in theaters, we are getting some really cool fucking movie horror films in theaters this year like and once again two of those are a24 leave it to a24 to bring something unique to theaters and scott's like a24 oh yeah oh, give it to yeah. me <laughs> scott's like ready to take the whole thing from a24 yeah and i was gonna say uh this has a different vibe than x uh it's not like slashery like slasher slasher stab stab sex 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 this one is uh very deep in-depth look at a character study like and just kind of like how someone's brain works basically it's very fascinating and yeah like i say mia goth fucking steals this movie it's an incredible performance from her well that is very exciting scotty um now is this only in theaters right now uh yes i believe it is and this so has me excited recommend for, oh, price? 100 yes awesome and uh, apparently this is, uh, there is now a sequel to X going to be made. That's going to be based in the 80s called Maxine following the character from X that survived, which was also Mia Goth's character. My goodness. You know who told, who I heard about talk about this was Rob Humphreys on his Horror Life podcast. We'll get to it later. Mm. But Rob seems to be in the know. Mm. In the know, as like knowing. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying in being the in the no, like no, no good. No, no, he no, no, no. I think he liked it. No, no, no. Yeah, Rob doesn't like anything. Um, no, I think he liked it, but I'm just saying he seems to be in the know. Like he spends a lot of time reading things. Like you know, you right. and I don't do that. No. <laughs> Read we're too, no. We're too busy banging bitches <laughs> in our best thing. <laughs> yeah, me. I'm bitches. I bang myself. Hey, you know what? You never have to worry about consent that way. Right. It's true, right? It's true. I'd be like, so, your eyes say no, no. But your <laughs> no, mouth says your yes, yes. Your hand God. says yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, God. oh, my God. Anyway, on to like more 2022s. I actually probably having a hand job would be better than this oh, movie. No. Um, so this is, I don't know what it is with Netflix films, man. Like, I don't know. Because unless it's an international film on Netflix, it sometimes comes see, comes saw. Now, they did come out with the Fear Street saga last year, which was great. Yeah. Uh, I thought Someone in Your House was fine for a preteen boopity boppity film. Um, they did pick up The Rental last year, and they do have Possessor on there now. They have a lot of dated ones, like the ones that, you know, we watched before. Right, they, yeah. You know, they dropped this year, except for the international films. I do find internationally is where Netflix is at for horror. Uh, hashtag Alive was a good example of the great international film that you found on Netflix. Um, this is not. Um, it is called I Came By. It is a 110-minute uh, runtime of rebellious young graffiti artist who targets the home of the wealthy elite but discovers a shocking secret that leads him on a journey endangering himself and those closest to him. 
this was a grind for me to get through. I'll be honest. Um, it's an, it's a, it's a home invasion film plus, I guess you could say. I heard it almost and, compared to like, don't breathe or something. Yeah. Like yeah. Only not as good. <laughs> let's, let's make something very clear. This is no, don't breathe. Um, this is, um, you know, a little bit of a discussion on how we view people in society and roles that people get. It's definitely more of a murder mystery. I think if you like murder mysteries and that kind of like lightness or you've seen Downton Abbey and you want to see one of the main guys in it. Um, mm. What's his name? See if I can find his name here. Um, Anthony Calf, I think it is. He's, I guess, one of the main guys from Downton Abbey. Then, yeah, I would say watch this movie. Uh, it was okay. You know, it's, 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 it would be, it could be loosely tied to horror. I wouldn't tie it very strongly to horror. There's one really cool scene in it where someone does something really clever to get out of a dangerous situation that I, I don't know if we chose smartest move in a horror movie, one of the characters would get an award from me here because there was someone that did something and I was like, fuck yes, finally, thank God. Somebody think with their brain. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's really not that great of a film. So unless you really dig the murder mysteries, more of that angle, uh, then I would skip it. And if that is your thing, it is available on the Netflix and its name is I Came By. Oh, sorry, Scott, you happened to cough at that moment I stopped talking. Sorry, I came. Bye. 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 Now, <laughs> you you jumped on the sword for this one because I really didn't want to watch this. Not because I don't like remakes, but because I wasn't a huge fan of the original. I felt like once you got to the end of this film, there was no reason to watch it again. Oh, yeah. Um, and... Might as well just jump right into it. It's uh, Good Night, Mommy, which was on Amazon Prime. Uh, stars, uh, what's her name? Uh, oh, my God. I am drawing a blank. Um, Naomi Watts. Oh, I like Naomi Watts. Yeah, she plays the mother in this. Um, uh, that's still not enough to make me watch it, though. Eh, no, like her performance was... Okay. I'll just enjoy her from the Desperate Hour earlier this year, which is, by the way, on Netflix. That's one of the only good films on Netflix. Oh, Man, that's that on Netflix? Ne yeah, that might win Netflix award for me because so far that's the only one I've liked this year that's come out on Netflix. Well, I mean, there's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but that's the oh, only yeah. one. True. I think I liked Desperate Hour a little bit more for the emotional side. That came right, out. I get that, yeah. 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 Um, but the synopsis for this remake is when twin brothers arrive home to find their mother's demeanor altered and face covered in surgical bandages, they begin to suspect the woman beneath the gauze might not be their mother. And if, you, if you've seen the original, which I believe was Argentinian, um, no, I'm sorry, uh, Austrian. We covered it. Yeah, we covered it. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, we, go back to the show, guys, and find out where it was. It's yeah, I think that we, country. We, we covered it in the German episode, but I think it was like Austrian or something like that. Okay. So like, um, but yeah, have you seen the original stick with that? Uh, this does absolutely nothing new. And I think the original does everything better, like actually build suspense and all that. Naomi Watts performance in this is way too over the top and just doesn't work. And you're just going. Oh, that's oh. interesting because the mother's really subtle in the first, in the original. Yeah, and yeah. Naomi Watts like cranks it up to a fucking thousand in this. <laughs> she probably and... like they're they, 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 like, all right, crank this bitch up. She's like, all right, <laughs> all right time to do some crazy. And <laughs> yeah, they switched up a few minor things, but it was nothing to say. Oh, you need to watch this because they switched up. No, it's very minor. They had nothing to. It, played out the exact same way literally this is what a pointless remake is this is a pointless remake like there was just nothing to it very just blah didn't need to be made so basically if you were too lazy to read subtitles before here's your opportunity to watch the movie in, in a lesser yeah in a lesser version <laughs> okay okay so is it just is it available on prime yeah it's a prime i think it was a prime exclusive okay well i guess if you got prime and you never saw the original yeah, I mean, I mean, it's you worth. Get, I would say, like, if you haven't seen the original, at least give it a shot because you'll be at least uh, you'll probably be caught off guard a little bit. Yeah, and I think like if you don't like subtitles, and there's no judgment here, and like for some reason, if reading's really tough for you, and I don't mean that condescendingly, like there are some people that struggle. I'm dyslexic, so reading can be a challenge for me. Subtitles don't really bother me because it's it's not that important. We'll say like in the sense of like reading a paper or something is right. So. Right. But yeah, for some people, like maybe that's just not their thing. And, you know, maybe this is a good alternative. I think it's definitely one of those stories that once you see it one, once you watch it one time, you're like, okay. Yeah, that's all you really like, need to watch it. 
you know, like I don't usually hear many people say, "Oh, Good Night, my, Mummy's my favorite movie of all time." <laughs> doesn't isn't usually, you know, mentioned even by the horror elitists as uh, right. a film that they you know need to watch over and over again. Um, a film I really enjoyed. Speaking of uh, IFC Midnight, which by the way, I'm really digging IFC Midnight. They put out some you, good gems. They put out some good shit. Uh, but you got to be in the mood for their films. Their films are very much plot development, plot development with a dramatic ending. We saw that earlier with Resurrection. Like it's it's all plot. It's all character. It's all like you have to follow along because if you miss a scene, you miss everything. It's one of those movies that you got to pause if you get up to go to the washroom because when you come back, you'll be like, what the fuck's going on? Like it's one of those. So okay. um, this movie is called The Watcher. Enough meaning up to it. This movie is called, or should, I Watcher? shouldn't say The Watcher. Watcher. It's just called Watcher. <laughs> it is a 96 minute runtime. Scott has his face right up to the fucking camera. Um, evil wants to be seen as a serial killer stalks the city julia a young actress who's just moved to a town with her husband notices a mysterious stranger watching her from across the street uh the young lady that is in this is uh michaela micaiah Monroe from it follows yeah. did i say it right michael uh michael monroe michael R- R- monroe from it follows Mwah. always love seeing her again and in the guest and in the guest she uh you know and she seems to be stalked i don't know that's just her jam i guess that's what she she, she always feels like somebody's watching her <laughs> honestly this movie i really fucking enjoyed this was a fucking heather film so if you have listened to me in the past and been like oh man heather i really like that you like movies that you know have empowered female characters that um bases a lot around plot development and social political issues then this is the film for you uh i highly recommend it it is a 96 minute runtime I don't obviously want to say too much about it, but the acting is good, and I found the payoff awesome. Nice. Uh, Really, really good film. I think IFC Midnight is becoming up there with A24 in terms of some of the shit they put out. I just think they they pick up some really good films. Yeah, because I know they've been around uh, much longer than A24, I believe, and yeah, they've always always had some hit and misses back in the day, but it seems like more lately they've been having a lot more hits. Maybe once we get through, if we decide whatever we do with our formatting as we go forward, I wouldn't mind doing one where we each choose like a A24 film and talk about it, or we each choose an IFC midnight film and talk about it we choose it in court film and talk about it um i think it'd be cool to go through the distribution companies and just talk about you know how does this represent their other products that can they come out because right. you know, if we're honest you know you can you can count on blumhouse to have the fluffy stuff and i know they produce some jordan peele shit too but really their films are very easy to consume you know, Halloweens are very easy to consume. They're yeah. very, very consumable, easy ones. And I find the IFC Midnights and the A24s of the world take films that are, and and I, I agree with Rob Humphreys about not using elevated horror. I think that's a dumb fucking term. But I do yeah, I think that, that yeah, I just think it's a different kind of way of storytelling. It's more plot focused. It's more character focused. Um, it tends to take place more in the real world. Like this could happen to you where Blumhouse stories and Blumhouse stories are, are whatever are over the top silly. Yeah. Like not going to happen. Like even the fear street, you know, saga that came out on Netflix, none of that shit's going to happen. None of that's believable. Right. Anyway, the, so watcher is available and I recommend it. If you like soul burns, you like character development and you like a payoff It is available on voodoo, the shutter, the shutter prime, uh AMC, amc and amazon channel amc and amazon channel in the united states and direct tv in the united states it is worth whatever rental you pay for this and if it's on shutter uh, i didn't i have not seen it on shutter but i believe that it probably is if it says it is here watch this movie this movie is exceptional nice yeah i will definitely be watching this one it's been on my list for a little while now oh fuck yeah you won't regret it scotty it's a good one now speaking of regrets <laughs> you know I blame Heather for this. <laughs> blame she, Canada. <laughs> she she brought up the whole wonderful idea of, hey, we should have a shark movie category for our awards. So what does my dumbass do? I go on a deep dive into yeah, shark movie I never movie told territory. you to watch some of these films, just so we're this, clear. This is your fault. This is the, all your fault, because how, no, how am I to know a movie like Sharkula? <laughs> It's going to be bad. 
<laughs> Unless I watch it, Heather. I, you're right. How? It, why would you ever think a movie like that would be bad? That's right. A movie named Sharkula. It's not good, people. You know what? We'll do an award this year. We don't usually do negative awards, but we'll do what I regret. <laughs> there we, <laughs> what go. we regret most watching this year. That that I like that. We should. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, boy, oh boy, this was 71 minutes of pure fucking torture. Um, this was <laughs> this was 70 minutes longer than it needed to be. <laughs> it needed to be a fake trailer, and that's about it. Um, you know what's me... sad? That that fake trailer for Hand Job Cabin, and it was never in movie. That know, probably right? would have been better than this. 100%. <laughs> uh, but the synopsis, if you must really know, is the. <laughs> The curse of Count Dracula, hmm, shock, lives on in shark-infested waters, hmm, sci-fi shock, claiming the lives of a tourist community, hmm, blah. A sea hunt for the new species results in monsters, madness, and bloodshed. No monsters, only Sharkula. <laughs> this great white is putting the bite back into terror. No, it's not. It's putting you to sleep. And it has help <laughs> with the aid of new vampires intent on seeing it survive. Uh, more like cultists, not really vampires. But anyways... Uh, this was just, you know, I don't like to bash on movies, but this was awful. <laughs> I let two years ago, I watched Ouija Shark going, you know what? This Canadian is Canadian classic, Canadian super low budget classic, like, <laughs> like $3,000 tops or whatever. Right? It was, I went in going, you know, this is gonna be a terrible movie, but it looks like it'll be dumb fun. And I was right. They made a dumb fun movie, like where it went by like i i I enjoyed my time with it i was laughing because it was so ridiculous this tried doing that but also tried to take itself seriously and that is its biggest problem because it's got like the worst cgi i've ever seen and this is coming from someone that's seen cgi in the fucking late 80s and that was not good and or or some of the shitty uncork films we watched like we watched some real like shitty films in 2020 (laughs) but uh this literally had a shark floating around like a looked like a puppet mixed with terrible cgi with a dracula cape on swimming around in the waters and would leap out of the waters and bite people on the neck and it tried to do the whole dracula story from bram stoker's dracula but use a shark instead and the filming was absolutely awful like everybody was very jittery on the screen like so whatever they were they were using some type of motions thing on the camera and it made it look way worse than it should have the like the acting is I think they said, hey, can you act? Oh, no, I'm terrible. You're hired. (laughs) Because these people Okay, the movie was called Sharkula. I'm sorry. At what point did you not... Well, a Ouija shark at least had people that knew what what type of movie they were in and acted accordingly. This was awful. The acting in this was painful. I can't believe I sat through these 71 minutes. It felt like three hours. (laughs) It was dreadful. You and know, I blame you, scene, Heather. I blame me. Like, I fucking made you watch this You made movie. me watch this movie. <laughs> like, you had no choice, but no, in the matter. I didn't. Uh, none. I just forced you into it. Um, that's right. I'm going to force you into more things, Scott. <laughs> oh, I love it when I'm forced. I already know how many things I'm a bully on this show. Now you're just building it up to me even more. <laughs> like, anyway, so do you recommend Sharkula? <laughs> 100% no. Where do you, where can people find it if for some reason they want to torture? I don't know. Rob likes to watch really weird shit. So for well, Rob if, Humphrey, who's listening from this horror life and slasher radio, with, but this well, horror life. I'll tell you it. where it is so you can avoid it. Um, <laughs> it's Tubi? apparently on Tubi. It's apparently on Amazon Prime, Vudu, Amazon, and what is that one? Microsoft Store. Do not rent this. Do not rent You know what's funny? It. How, how like, some of these places pick this shit up because I think they're like, oh, yeah, look at this shit. Yeah, 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 add it. <laughs> Do yeah. it. I'll say, I will have to admit, the cover to Sharkula looks awesome as hell. That's well, the only thing the movie's got going There you go. Daisy's going to watch it now. He passes the fucking cover test. Oh, Daisy's it definitely does. Like, number definitely one, does, number def- one movie of 2022 is Dave Z Sharkula. <laughs> it definitely does not pass the Dave Z cover <laughs> test. I just think for a shark movie, the cover looks fucking awesome. Yeah, Dave Z's probably in love with it right now. He's like, oh my God, this movie's so good. Oh it's God, Dave, right. Z would, Dave Z would murder me if He's you... Like, Fuck Saint Maud. Sharkula is the new, the new best film. Oh um, god, he's gonna be like, uh, "Why did you watch that?" That's what he's gonna tell me. And we're gonna be like, "Dave, sometimes torture is what you want." We have sites, such sites to show you, Dave. <laughs> like the Cenobites, low, low budget Cenobites. 
Yeah. We're like Sharkula quality Cenobites. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I watched another fucking gem on Netflix. Okay. 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 So I watched this movie because, it, you know, when you go on Netflix, like it's super thirsty and all you have to do is like click over top of something and, and start, start playing. playing. Mm -hmm. And this movie had fucking Queen Latifah and Ludacris. And, Luda. and, I, was, and I was like, fucking Ludacris. Oh, yeah. This movie he is hasn't been I haven't seen him since Too Fast, Too Furious. Yeah. Oh, he's in all, he's in all the Fast and Furious films. I know. That's what I remember because we did it on. Oh yeah, uh, we did our other it's not show. Horror. Yeah, that was my pick. That was fun. Um, so anyway, this is called End of the Road. <laughs> it is a 89 minute runtime. There's no turning back. A recently widowed mom, Brenda, fights to protect her family during a harrowing road trip where a murder and a missing big cast plunges them into danger. Not a good film. Not a good action <laughs> film. Yeah, definitely not a survival film. I thought it was gonna be kind of survivalish, like think like duel or something like that. No. <laughs> No, this is a very, very weak film. The third act isn't too bad. There's actually some, there's a really good death in this movie, actually. Really? It's a, it's a shame it's in the third act. <laughs> because <laughs> you kind of got to get there. But I would say if you really like Queen Latifah and Ludacris and you want to see Ludacris like smoke pot and like look like he's forever 25 years old and Queen Latifah just be like cool ass Queen Latifah and like fuck people up this is the movie for you uh if if you like good films <laughs> do not watch this film uh, it's not the film for you <laughs> not the film for you netflix like i get what you were trying to do here and let me and let me assure you queen latif and, and hanging out with the leader chris wasn't the best worst way to spend my tuesday night uh but not not a good horror film so i would say skip over this bad boy unless you are a rapper fan like uh like i am and that is on the netflix and it is end of the road uh and that's the end of the road for me it is the end of the road for all of us now unfortunately scotty i'm only halfway through this film because right, because our good friend is uh out of power yes so you will have to talk about it only. all right so this is one i recommended to heather after i watched it because i seen it and went this is heather's movie this is gonna be in her top 10 holy shit she needs to watch this and i just stumbled on it because i was just like oh the trailer or the uh cover looks interesting but it's called take back the night Finding herself the victim of a violent monster attack, Jane launches a vigilante campaign to hunt the beast that tried to kill her. Jane's efforts intensify, but her troubling history of drug use and mental illness bubbles to the surface, causing her family, community, and authorities to question the authenticity of her account. Suddenly alone in her fight, Jane starts to doubt her own memory of the attack, to doubt if monsters exist at all. Uh, this is a very, very heavy film along the lines of something like Lucky and, uh, what was the other one? Oh, uh, The Night House. Mm -hmm. Like, it's mm -hmm. just got that very heavy topic, especially the, the topic of Lucky, where it's basically, like, seeing a woman go through something like this and no one seemed to fucking believe her. And it is so infuriating and will make you so mad. And it is so well done by this main actress. Uh, what is her name? Um, Emma Fitzpatrick. She does such an incredible job that you just feel her frustrations with everything that's going on in this film. And this won countless film festival awards, just to be clear. It? I, it, it won like 16 film festival oh, wow. awards. Yeah. Um, I'm half an hour in and I was like, holy fuck, Scott was right. Holy fuck. Like, Scotty knows me. What What can I say? Scotty knows me. Yeah, I know your taste very well. I knew this was going to anger you, get you on your Heather pedestal, and you're going to shout <laughs> to the heavens of how the righteous need to be taken care of here. <laughs> well, I think that, you know... I think we need to get over, I, I think men need to get over the fact that men do bad things and all men should be mad about that. And we don't have to say that not all men are bad. We know not all men are bad, but the reality is that men attack women and that's a problem. Yep. I, like I'm tired of people pretending it's not, it is. And women shouldn't have to take steps to be safe. Men should just not rape and attack women. Right. <laughs> like, and it's not a course. It's like me saying all women do this. Of course, I'd be like, well, I don't do that. I understand. But if I knew that somebody was hurting somebody, I would intervene and put a stop to it. And this is what these movies are trying to say. Yeah. It's trying to get the fragile males who can't understand that this is a societal problem to realize that this is an attack on them. It's an attack on what society's expectations are. Right. And we need to be better. Well, we all need and, to be better. <laughs> and this movie also kind of like goes even deeper with, you know, saying women need to also believe women exactly that's exactly 
what I'm also saying. I'm yeah. We all like, need to be better. Women yeah. need to be women, and that, like there's. I was talking to Kate from um, the Internal Spotless Mind podcast when I was in London, and I said to her, "Too often, women do not support women, and that's a problem. Mm-hmm. We all need to support each other. And when someone's engaging in shitty behavior, which is assaulting, whatever level of assault it is, whatever it is, it needs to not happen." And there's no debate in any world that you can tell me that that shit's okay. So I, I do think this movie will be more palatable for people um, from the 30 minutes I've watched, but I look forward to watching the rest. But I agree with you, Scotty. It is a, it's a heavy watch because this shit happens. Like I'm yeah. so tired of people pretending like it doesn't. Like it does. And it's a problem. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, it absolutely problem. is. <laughs> but, but yeah, I'm glad you, you turned me on to it, so to say. Yeah, I'll say I can't wait to hear your thoughts when you're able to finally finish it because, yeah, this movie is fucking solid from beginning to end and just the message is just so fucking important and they do such a great job and, like, yeah, this is a must-watch for absolutely everybody. Like, I highly recommend this. Um, right now, it is available on Amazon Prime, iTunes, Google Play, Vudu, and that is uh, all, I believe, to rent. And this is a movie that needs to be rented. This is worth the money you pay for it. Absolutely. Um, and hopefully it has a good reception from people and um, people watch it and understand the purpose behind it and, and just can, I don't know. No, if I swear to God, someone calls a fucking woke. Yeah. I don't know. I may cancel them because <laughs> I just can't, I just can't handle it anymore. I can't handle societal issues being diminished to something that someone can't understand. Right. Like, I just, like, you don't have to always agree with messages, but just because you don't agree with it doesn't make it woke. So, um anyway i watched the recent movie that was dropped on shuddy today like before we recorded because we're recording on a thursday uh yeah. scott was good enough to let me finish it without interrupting you're a good man scott Thank yeah because i was about to jump on it and i seen oh wait heather's halfway through it i better not jump on because i share my shutter with heather so like we cannot watch the same movie at the same time. We can be on the same streaming service, just not watching the exact same movie. They'll screw up no. the other person's view. Shutter will be like, you fucker. <laughs> right, like, what the fuck <laughs> you are you doing? already watched this scene! Um, so this is a 102-minute runtime. Cecilia, and it's called Sissy. Cecilia, and it's like hashtag triggered, which is one of the few times where I think hashtag triggered is funny here. Right. Um, Cecilia is a successful social me- influencer, living the dream until she runs into her ex-childhood best friend and is invited away on her bachelorette weekend. Suddenly, Cecilia finds herself stuck in a remote cabin with her school bully and a taste for revenge. This movie um, is not a revenge film. This this movie is a series of, like, I don't know. It's, it's, it's you could call it a series of unfortunate events, but it's not. It's, it's fucking fun. This movie is, is fucking fun. And it's got a 3.3 rating on Letterboxd. And fuck yeah, buckle up, ladies and gentlemen, because this shit is wild. Oh, um, I can't wait. I had a real good time with this. I uh, I had feel good fuzzies at the end of it, and some people after they watch that may wonder about me and a little bit in the head. But <laughs> it was it was a fucking fun film. It there's just some great special effects in this movie. There's some great um, lines in this movie. It is it is so fun. Um, oh, man, like fuck yeah, Shutter for picking up this bad boy. It is it is totally worth your time. Check it out. You will have a fucking blast with this film. Nice. Yeah, I can't wait to watch this one. I'm going to try to watch it tomorrow. Oh, do it. You'll have such a good time with this, Scotty. Um, I don't know if we'll be on people's top 10, but who fucking cares? You don't have to watch every fucking movie just so it'll be on your top 10. Sometimes you can just right. watch a movie and have a good time. And this is a good time. And it's on the shuddy. You got the shuddy? You check this bad boy out. And you like good times like me and Heather? Better check it out. Yeah, that's right. Sissy dropped today, which is Thursday, September 29th. So do it. Do, do it. it. So older watches, um, I watched a little known anthology because uh, I, I say little known because very few people I've talked to have actually heard of it before. I'll say I have not heard of this one. Yeah, Screams of a Winter Night. This is a 1979 film filmed out of camp. Ho, 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 ho. Um, it's a 91 minute runtime uh, in the shadow of evil, in the echo of sins. In the stare of the moonlight, our ghostly tales begin. Ooh, Ooh. spooky. Ten college friends take a winter weekend camping trip to Lake Dernan. The group holds up in a old cabin where the original owners were once found dead with the local Native Americans suspecting they were victims of a spirit called Shabby. 
as the group nestles in for the night, they start telling each other st- scary stories. So uh, these anthologies are pretty basic bitch ones. We got some pretty typical anthology stories, like the hook stories in this, which. Oh, okay, nice. Haven't we all heard the hook story before? But a million it's times. In this. this is a very long movie because there's a big setup before they get to the cabin. So there's a lot of character development in this film. You get to really know the couples really well. Um, there's a lot of characters. But if you are an anthology completist, I recommend it. Um, I found it interesting enough. I don't know if I would watch it again, but I am glad I got a chance to check it out. And I believe I found this bad boy on Shudder. Really? Mm -hmm. Nice. It is available on Shudder, AMC, and then Amazon. I would say if you have the Shuddy, watch it on the Shuddy. Nice. Okay, I'm going to do that. Yeah, Yeah, and and I'll go into my older watch, which I watched earlier today, because I'm still do. uh, I went through everything on Dave Z's list that he uh, shared with us. And was unfortunately only able to find about seven or I think about seven of the films and watched them. Uh, there's a couple that were subtitled that I had to save for when I'm at home. So I'm going to watch them at another time. Uh, so I just said, screw it. I'm just going to keep digging, seeing if I can find any other found footage films that I've heard of that I should check out. Mm-hmm. And so I looked up, just I just Google searched found footage films on Tubi just to see what I could find. And uh, Be My Cat, a film for Anne which I remember people talking about this when it first came out back in 2015. Uh, the synopsis is, let me pull that up real quick, because I am slacking off on this. Nee, 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 nee. Uh, all right, so the synopsis is, an aspiring Romanian filmmaker goes to sh- shocking extremes to convince Hollywood actress ha- Anne Hathaway to star in his film. Uh, this... Uh, Oh, and apparently this is part of a trilogy. First entry, in Ad- first entry in Adrian Pilfe's trilogy, which includes We Put the World to Sleep and Pure. I will have to look for those. But uh, yeah, this is basically a Romanian filmmaker who is seen the movie Dark Knight Rises and became obsessed with Anne Hathaway as Catwoman. And so he is like making this homemade film to showcase like, this is the movie I want you in, man. Like, you are incredible. You are the actress for this part, blah, blah, blah. So he's hiring Romanian actresses. And he just goes way too extreme and, like, starts, like, killing them because they're not doing what he wants them to. And he's getting all frustrated. And uh, this movie felt very uh, uncomfortable and Mm. real just because this could happen. There could be someone that's this obsessed with a celebrity that they do something like this it's very like fucking someone possible. could be this obsessed with smoke show right i'm scared like tim davis tim davis please don't make a movie without me <laughs> oh he's gonna make a movie with you don't you worry uh, i hope he does i hope he does i got the lube baby <laughs> um but yeah i i didn't get a chance to look but i am very curious to see if Anne hathaway ever heard of this film or looked into it because this would probably creep her the fuck out yeah you were saying it's that creepy yeah because like i say it just feels like this is real like this director could be like you're like because the director not only directed it he wrote it and he started it yeah so it's just like is this director for real what's going on here well makes you wonder right what the deal is with this dude doesn't it smart yeah it's and it's a very good fucking found footage film because of that like it just feels real and that's what found footage should be that's awesome scotty i'm glad you brought it to the table it's good to get more found footage where can you find it uh, this was on Tubi. Awesome. Good old Tubi. Hashtag I've been Tubi. loving Tubi more and more lately. Oh, you've been loving it. Oh, yeah. Been putting my tube on Tubi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have high five. High five, high five. Um, for what's new, I'm going to shout out a podcast that I listened to recently called This Horror Life with Rob Humphreys and his co-host, Ghost. The former... Uh- uh, title carrier of the hungry belt wow wow sky you're throwing fucking shade at rob here wow <laughs> oh man he's not gonna be friends with you anymore he's barely love, friends with me he's barely love friends. you rob i'll rub yeah, my rob, nip- i'll rub my nipples for you <laughs> rob's just rocking back cm punk is the best in the world cm <laughs> punk is the best in the world i love cm punk uh, he's so good i swear it's 2009 forever um <laughs> I'm so mean. I, like, what did I say to him the other day when he was like, CM Punk's the best in the world? I'm like, yes, yes, Rob. Time to get to bed now. Yeah, time to get to sleep, sleeps. <laughs> anyway, I shouldn't judge him. He's not that much older than me. So I, I don't know what I'm fucking running my mouth out, off about. Because anyway. that's what you do to people you care about. I That's actually what I do if I like you. It's true. If I make fun of you, I like you. If I'm not like super polite to you and kind, I probably 
probably don't care for right. that kind. If I'm super polite to you in PC, I probably don't like you that much. Um, so the more I make fun of you, it's a good sign. Um, yep. Anyway, this horror life is a great little podcast. So it's uh, ghost is I assume it's a female. I'm not going to assume her gender, but I think she identifies as a female. And her and Rob are great. So they do a little bit of thing like you know they check in, be like, hey, what's going on? Kind of like what you and I do. And then they talk about like horror news, which I thought was really interesting because we don't do that because you and I don't know anything. We used to do that, but <laughs> yeah. we stopped because we didn't know anything of interest. Um, and it's really great to listen to other people do it. And they have really good discussions. So they take topics and they have to discussions so they talked about a24 and they talked about all of a24 films including mm. horror and non-horror they also got into a little side rant about adam sandler and his movies which was really really interesting and it was a great conversation like i love how they take different topics they have like the top five lists and they just have conversations about it and you know i i see value in movie reviews there's a few people that i think can do them well but when you do something that's just a topic, it's so much more interesting. And their flow and chemistry is is awesome. Uh, so I recommend them strongly. This Horror Life, you can find it on Spotify, iTunes, anywhere you find podcasts. Check them out and subscribe and follow. Um, they're both really informative. And, and, I, and I think they're a really good podcast. Yeah, I was saying, Rob is a very knowledgeable dude. I have not had a chance to listen to his shows yet. But like, yeah, I, I've got to talk to him quite a few times. He's knowledgeable. He's uh, very opinionated, which is very fun. That's why we pick on him. Because yeah. Sometimes I feel like he's just doing that to be over the top. Sometimes you never get that feeling from him that he's just trying to be different. Like who really doesn't like the Final Destination series? Like, honestly. <laughs> Rob, you know you'd love him. Like Deep Rob down. was born in the same era that you and I were. Those movies were the fucking shit. Like even, they're not great movies. No one's going to argue that they're great movies, but they have a nostalgia to them. They really oh, they absolutely them. do. They're fun. And the next one's going to be great, Rob. I don't care what you say. Look, we're all mad at Rob. Anyway, listen to Rob's <laughs> podcast. Rob is yes. fabulous. He is. He's great, great, great. Very smart and funny. <laughs> very smart and very funny. <laughs> very smart. Very funny. <laughs> very evil. Then Scott House in the Grease. Right. Uh, so what I brought for the What's New segment this time is a video game that uh, me and my friends, Devin and Matt, have been playing. Uh, they, are the, they were my old co-writers on the Pop Gaming page when I used to do that. Um, and we decided to just find a way to like reconnect and start just gaming together again, like whenever we get the chance. So we've been starting to play since it's spoopy season. Uh, okay, decided, they're done. <laughs> decided to play Dead by Daylight, which is a asymmetrical horror game where one person plays a killer and the other four plays survivors. And these four survivors are placed in this like arena type room and the killer has to basically hunt and stalk them while the survivors try to restart and fix these four generators when you get the generators started you have to run and open this gate and escape um that is all the survivors have to do just kind of hide run away do whatever they can and then just try to work on these generators and get the fuck out of there and the killer is there to hunt them down knock them to the ground pick them up and hook them on these giant meat hooks to sacrifice to these demon entities that come down and just take your character away. Um, it's very, I reviewed this back when I used to write for Horror Geek Life. Um, I was not a fan playing by myself because I just found it just very drab and boring and like just felt very same old, same old. Mm -hmm. This was years ago and many, many, many updates and uh, expansions later. It still feels a lot like that. That's very repetitive. There's not a lot of excitement there, be, like, but playing with friends does make this a hell of a lot more fun because they convinced me into buying the game because I was like, look, guys, I'm not a fan. I've never been a fan. I've tried and tried and tried. They're like, well, just play with us. I bet you'll have more fun. And yeah, because I was playing with them, I had a lot more fun because we're working as a team trying to outsmart the killer. Um, and one thing I will say about this franchise or this game is they have gotten, gone to great lengths and have gotten the rights to many horror movie icons. And so now there's Ghostface, there's Pinhead, there's Freddy Krueger. Oh, there's good for them. Leatherface. There's uh, Michael Myers. Uh, there's even uh, one of the killers from The Purge wearing a gas mask. Like, they've gotten all the rights to the, all these characters and brought them in so the killer can be a variety of different movie icons. But I think that's awesome. And there's also survivors from those movies that you can play as now. So, like, uh, Laurie Strode from Halloween and, uh, like, characters like that. But downside is 
you bring in those movie characters, they're doing the exact, like they have their own unique moves, but they're doing the exact same thing. They got to knock you to the ground, pick you up, hook you. It's like, if you're going to do like something with like Pinhead or something, make it so he has his own unique kills or you something. You know, you're talking from a big person who doesn't know how to code. I know, right? I know. <laughs> but no, this is, this is just oh, what I want. Can you make individual codes for my individual characters that allow me to have special moves in Dead by Daylight? They're like, we got the fucking copyrights. Are you not impressed enough by that, dude? What else do you fucking want? I want another Friday the 13th. Or you're like, I want it all. <laughs> I want another Friday the 13th game. Because that would have had Jason running around killing people and like yet over sixty different ways to kill people. You had environment kills. You had unique Jason kills. You had all sorts of cool shit. That's what I want. But I mean, I no, get it. We'll get a I Friday get Nightmares it. game. It can be you with big hard ons and cars and me getting drunk at bars. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to drink more shots of tequila? Answer yes. Do you want to get lost hiking with your dog? Yes. Or like choose your own adventure. It's just that. Do you want to cast this lightning bolt or do you want to uh, bang Tim Davis? <laughs> Uh, do you want to actually have a, ter- a chick talk to you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it, Scott. Love it. Got rolls and pussy. Who am I to, what am I to say? <laughs> it's got the play play. Um, but yeah, I would you recommend it? Yeah, I'd say this is uh, fun, especially if you have friends to play online. I did, like I say, I didn't have fun playing against, like playing alongside strangers. Uh, this is just way more fun when you have like friends that you can talk to and like That's communicate. True. Why with. go to a sex theater when you can have bang friends at home? Exactly. You I get, get it. You get. I get me. it. I get you get. You, you get, get what I'm putting down. I understand. I stopped going to sex theaters too because it's just not as fun in a room with strangers as it is to masturbate right. online I mean, with all my. When you're, when you're jacking off and you make eye contact when you don't know, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's like playing Dead by Deadlight, Dead by Daylight, the same way. You need yeah. to have friends. And you can't make eye contact. It's just weird. No, no eye contact. It's just weird. Well, that covers our what's new section <laughs> and our <laughs> older watches and our 2022. So hopefully we've given you something to check out. Um, as always, we will be back after a brief message from our uh, one of our Legion podcast friends on the Legion podcast network. And we're going to talk a little bit about Indonesia horror. We only chose two movies, which we'll probably do moving forward because the show's getting shorter and shorter. Um, but the two movies we chose are fucking stellar fucking mwah, chef's yeah. kiss, kiss. So like chef's kiss, these, these movies were Scott's fuck, bang. Scott's bang. These movies were fucking brilliant. So I'm looking forward to having a brief conversation about them, but after these messages, we'll be right back. <laughs> this will keep us quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You caught me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's the Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legionpodcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash legion podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, back to the cutting room. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about some Indonesian horror movies, well, two to be specific, uh scotty and i kind of mutually chose these i think one was i really wanted to see it i remember venom from fresh cuts talking about it and how much he liked it so and i can definitely say venom has good taste i really enjoyed this one so sticking to our similar format from before scott will introduce the movie maybe give his generalized thoughts on it i will share my thoughts and then we'll you know wrap it up with anything that we want to add just so we move through this section relatively at a, at a pace where we're not repeating ourselves over and over again yeah yeah. Uh, so, all right. Um, I will jump into this then. The first movie we are talking about is uh, Satan's Slaves, released September 28th, 20, 2017. 
directed by Punjabdi Satan. Oh, good job. Thank you. After dying from a strange illness that she suffered for three years, a mother returns home to pick up her children. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's what the synopsis is. What? I know. That is like not nah, like I'm even the one at wow, even the one on letterbox. After the death of I, Rini's mother, something is disturbing her family. Yeah. Wow, what the hell? <laughs> but you know what? I guess you could say something returned home to pick up her children. No, yeah, that's weird. Oh yeah. But uh mm-hmm. well, I will give uh like my quick thoughts. Uh I watched this back in 2017 and I heard everybody just praising it, praising it, loving it, and it was on people's top tens and stuff. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna give this a shot and give watch it. I unfortunately did not give it the uh, proper attention it deserved because I was also doing my accounting homework at the time for college and just threw it out in the background with the English dub. And I just did not care for this film mm-hmm. and because I didn't really give it much attention. Rewatching it now, however, I am definitely higher on it, though I still don't think I'm as high on it as you are. Like, I liked it, but the next movie we're going to talk about is way more my thing. Fair enough. Fair enough. I... Do you want to add anything else? Like, is there anything that really stood out to you about the film? Um, yeah, I will definitely say, uh, like, I really love how this is shot. It's very creepy. It's dark. It's got this nice uh, folklore surrounding it. With, with the yeah, I was going to say the folklore in this is really good. The 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 concept of basically making a deal with Satan so you can yes. have children, right, is what this is based upon. The The wanting children so badly and what you'll do in order to have that happen. Yeah, and I have to say the most, this kind of happened in uh, Autopsy of Jane Doe, and it's just something very slight, but the use of a ringing bell. Yes. So fucking effective and creepy in this film. Yes, yes. I, I thought what this film did really well is the development of the family. So, yeah. you know, early on, we find out the mom was this rock star singer, and she is now really sick and the family's very poor. They're trying to get royalties for her music. Apparently her music's not selling or I don't know, whatever. I think they're just ripping her off at the record company, but anyway. Um, and she eventually dies and this family is grieving her death. But at the same time, the mother has made a deal with Satan that basically to have children, there's a price that needs to be paid. And they believe the price to be paid is that they will take the youngest child. Uh, Satan will come and take the youngest child. And it's a really good development of the family. There's two older siblings that kind of take the caregiving route because the dad is kind of too busy trying to figure out how he's going to survive and pay bills. And I thought it was subtly scary. And I enjoyed the religious piece that came into this. And like, while you're a religious family, there's a lot of prayers that go on. Um, The cult being involved in it is really interesting. I I felt like this really was a great take on religion, a great take on family relationship building, the idea of what you would do to have something that you really want, and then the feeling of you can't escape it at the end. And there's a sequel coming. I've seen really that. I'm excited to see what the sequel is like because they do set this up for a sequel at the end. And I think it's a really, really good delivery. Um great suspense feeling like there's some like there's definitely some jump scares in this but i wouldn't say it's overly jump scary i think they do more to build the atmosphere of creepiness than just being like bah, bah, bah. like there's a indonesian movies do great fucking storytelling yes they really make you connect with the family or the character and they do fucking religious horror so fucking goddamn well Fuck, yeah, it's and, so good. And they uh, don't shy away from showing you things. And... No. And and dark shit with kids, too. Like, there's yeah. nobody that's safe. And, you know, I think their folklore telling is something to, to be seen. And I think Indonesian films are some of the better horror films that are created, to be quite honest. I think that they're scarier. I think they build suspense better. And I think they play on reality more. Like, you can envision this family. You can envision people living in these situations and i think they just do a great job of it yeah like they this was uh very like the story like you said they build this story it's like a slow burn but they build it up so fucking well and that is one thing i will say like that shot this up higher for me than where it was before is the story had me sucked it this time around yeah where before i didn't give a crap because i was like oh spooky ghost movie blah and that you know i I have obviously changed my tune over the years on stuff like that and like give every movie its attention. And 
yeah, this movie, I can see why it is high on everybody's list. Like, still not as effective for me, but that's just because I like the more uh, hardcore, hyper-violent type stuff, which we will get into here in a sec. Oh, yes, we sure will. <laughs> but uh, no, this one was just solid all around. The acting is incredible. I am very curious to see the sequel when that comes out. Yeah. Because it's supposed to be this year, isn't it? It is. Yeah, I'm excited to see it, too. I think, I think yet again, Indigenous Horror, like a fucking... I don't know. Yeah. Certain countries, man, they just bring it. Thai horror, fucking Japanese horror, Indonesian horror, like fucking bring it. Like it's yeah. just God is so fucking creepy or gory. Why don't we jump into it? Because the next movie is a gore fest. All right. So, uh, yeah, we had uh, like we had many choices for good Indonesian horror films, just like but we picked these two. But uh, the one I uh, we went with was the Queen of Black Magic remake from November 7th, 2019. Let me bring up the director's name. All right, and the director. Uh, actually, I'm gonna try. I loved. I loved reading this title of the movie out loud too. So I'm gonna try doing that again. The uh, the Queen of Black Magic, Ratu Ilmu Hitam, uh, directed by Kimo Stembol. Um, and it was also, I think, written by someone that worked on Impetigor, which was another great freaking Indonesian Fuck, horror. Film. Another great Indonesian fucking horror film. Mm, yeah. But uh, yeah. Queen of Black Magic, uh, a middle-class family travels into a rural rural Indonesia to visit the terminally ill director of the orphanage where the father was raised as a child. Sinister and terrifying events soon befall them and the other visiting families. Yeah, sinister is a good word for that Mm -hmm. because holy shit, like this movie, this movie is just mean and violent and not a single person is safe in this film. I, uh, like I said, I am the gore hound lover on our podcast. I love the over the top violent shit, especially when it's got a good story. And this has a great story about revenge, which I really fucking dug. Um, Cause yeah, you basically find out that the, uh, the orphanage director, uh, well, first you find out that there is this woman that was locked in a room for like many, many years. And she was like going crazy and bashing her head against the wall until she died. And they, buried her under the floorboards and they're thinking that's what's causing the hauntings well that's not necessarily true what it was is the director of this orphanage was molesting all of the young girls in this orphanage and it was had the pictures hidden and one of the women the young girls knew about it and that is the one that got locked in that room by herself and basically died and then I uh, believe this is the part where I'm confused. I didn't realize if it couldn't remember if it was a spirit or like someone that was still alive that was getting the, enacting the revenge on all these people. By... I think she was the daughter of somebody. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, she was enacting the revenge brought upon by the mother and she was using black magic and the, literally saying, I don't believe in heaven or hell. So I am going to bring hell to life on this earth right now and yeah he did the effects in this while there are some cheesy cgi moments some of this is just fucking like turn your head away fucking horrifying to watch like it gets under your skin it fucking Mm -hmm. it deals with like people's fears like uh people that have like the fear of like holes in the skin or whatever i forget what that yeah phobia is but yeah a woman has that happen to her back with bugs popping out of the holes and uh, uh, (laughs) woman woman thinking she's like picturing herself fat in a mirror and slicing off chunks of her flesh oh yeah like she has she has anorexia right yeah um and oh man it's crazy crazy yeah and and you see a little boy get shot a couple times and then get tortured later oh man it is uh it is definitely a whore a hard it's a hard watch it is it is it is vicious like it is it is a vicious film and it's and it starts slow but fuck does it pick up like yeah. you see a, a chick mutilate herself in with the cutting and that happens like i don't know midway through the film like you're just getting started and then yeah. you have the bus crash yeah, i was gonna say post, the bus crash yeah. even before that you see like all the children's bodies mutilated on there oh it is crazy it is it is a very 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 good film um the i i agree there's only one part that i think the cgi is questionable i think the rest of it is is honestly fine um yeah the the centipedes were the only part that i was like eh. yeah that's i knew that's what you were referring to um i thought it was like 
to me, that doesn't make or break the film. The rest no, of it, it is doesn't. so good that you don't even like the fact that they have that chick fucking slicing and dicing herself or like people smashing their head into there's a lot of smashing people's fucking heads into shit in this film. Like a lot of yeah. brain damage going on in this bitch. Yeah, and um, honestly, you couldn't get real life centipedes that size because they are poisonous and deadly. So uh yeah, you have to use CGI. Right. And like you have to do what you gotta do in order to like make a film work. But fuck, they definitely had money when they did this and um fuck like yeah like the last third act of this is just balls to the walls like and the torture these people are being sent to and there's one part where um the the protagonist gets a head up on the antagonist and even then the antagonist is like i'm not fucking scared of you like it's yeah. just it's intense and you the plot is very simple there you know there was sexual abuse revenge because you know no one believed this person and now the family is going to pay for that you know and it doesn't really matter because the sins of other people kind of fucking flop down to you i find that's very common in indonesia and like japanese horror like it doesn't matter if you do the wrong but if you go into a place where that wrong was done it's gonna follow you now too yeah um and i think this film does it excellently this is an excellent fuck i've never seen the original so i feel like we should probably do that at some point but fuck this is yeah a good movie. yeah because i was gonna try watching it before we recorded i just didn't have the time because it is on shutter as well oh man it's so good yeah i'm kind of so, curious so good to, but yeah this one like there was a reason this won my bloodbath of the year last year in the awards category because that third act is just so fucking violent and cruel and man i and rewatching it i fucking love this movie it's so hard to watch but i love that type of shit it like, really is quite fucking good it really 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 is yeah and i'm and I'm glad we decided to cover it. I mean, obviously, like, we're not doing it justice like someone like Fresh Cuts could do, like, going deep dive into this. But, like, you know, we're doing yeah. our fl- we're doing our flair and style of it. Just quick talk about it. But, yeah, like. Again, though, movies... folk, folk horror done right. Religious yeah. horror done right. Like, this is an example of witchcraft that is fucking scary. Yeah. Like, this isn't a witch that you're like, oh, witch, dress up for Halloween. This is a witch that you're like, holy fuck, this is terrifying. And the revenge purpose of it, like the slow burn, the complete descent into chaos and pain, indigenous indigenous horror, sorry, Indonesian, Indonesian, thank you, horror films do that right well. Again, this is an example where if this was remade in North America, it would be a fucking shitty movie. Oh, it would. It's just not our style. We're just not good at that. And that's okay. We don't have to be, you know, leave it to the people that are good at it. 100% because yeah like this uh I would I definitely want to do a deep deeper dive into some more Indonesian horror because there are so many good ones out there so many good ones out there but these were a sample of the two that we looked at and I think generally speaking with Indonesian horror as we said good for core good use of religion good use of build up to pain and good use of you can relate with the characters and emphasize what they're suffering you care about their suffering you believe that they're suffering and i think that that is a sign of a good horror film yeah 100 percent. right so we'll continue our around the world but for the last part of our episode and that we'll be closing out with this came from a thought that scotty had today um where is the line so for out of the dark uh where is the line between fantasy and reality when it comes to doing found found footage a discussion so, Scotty, you kind of talked about it earlier, but you made a really good point about the film Be My Cat, a film for Anne. Yeah. Yeah, like, I feel like, you know, that, like, this is where I think found footage, <laughs> the wording I'm going to use, this is where I think the found, uh, found footage genre finds its footing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, um, um, but I think it's when found footage feels real yeah. like where you're watching it going okay i'm gonna look into this because i don't know if i'm watching a snuff film or someone's fucking own delusional rants that they recorded and somehow got put into fucking distributed it's like there's been certain films that have done that and those are usually the ones that fucking just get under my skin so like be my cat a film friend i that feels fucking real as shit like it's mm-hmm. unnerving mm-hmm. Um, same with Pokeeps, uh, the Poughkeepsie tapes. Uh, when I watched that for the first time, I literally looked up and Googled, is this movie like based off of something real? Is this like real footage added in here? Cause it just felt real. Um, what was another one I was trying to think of? Uh, capture you know kill what? release. Absolutely. That one. Yes. But you know, which one it's when they pretend to be real. I feel like something like, for example, the devil inside or the paranormal films, you, you know, they're movies. 
Yeah. Like, you know, they're movies. There's just something about the acting that's in them where you're like, yeah, you know what? This could, this is definitely a, you know, a fucking, a fucking, you know, movie that they're making into a mockumentary. Lake Mongo. If you yes. showed Lake Mongo to somebody and you were like, this is a documentary, <laughs> They wouldn't know any different. Like, Make Mongo does a very good job of blurring reality and fantasy. Yeah, 100%. And, uh, fuck, what was the one from last year that you, me, and Horror Brandon... Horror and, in the High Desert? No, the other one that was, that was, like, Lake Mongo with, like, the people, like, just disappearing and randomly reappearing. Oh, yes, oh. in the, in the island, the, uh... It was another it was, 2B1. Yeah, and it was, like, uh, this guy that, or oh. it was, like, an open space. Kind of thing, yeah right? I'll, yeah I'll, I'll look into it while we if you want to keep i'll start talking yeah so i think that so something like that to me is is more realistic now blair witch started this because i guess cannibal holocaust maybe did but watching cannibal Hol holocaust now you kind of know that it's obviously a fake film but i guess back when it you know came out you could have thought that it was a realistic film i would have to go back and talk to people from that time but i remember blair witch coming out and i remember being at an age where i was like well is it real but why would they release it in theaters but that marketing campaign was so fucking smart that they made people think that it was a real film that people bought into it and i think another film that tried to do that was the house the house is october built yes um the house is october built really tried to give you the impression that it was just a group of people getting together and going out and filming and then they get locked in these fucking coffins at the end where something like grave encounters definitely gives you the vibe that it's a found footage film because they're making up a fictitious uh, tv series and the house at october built it almost feels like they're trying to be like oh yeah we're doing a youtube channel and this is our video for it it's weird how some movies blur the line and others do not. And it's almost like the way that they tell the story and how they build up why they're filming, the purpose of it reflects whether it's real or not. And did you find the movie, Scott? I cannot seem to find it digging through my list, but I did come across one. We Are the Missing from last year was also another yes. one that felt like very real. Felt like a real documentary, right? Yeah. And just uh, uh, one that I watched earlier this year, uh, like when I was doing my found footage, just digs, I uh, found, I think it was The Savage Lands. And that yes. one tells the story just with photographs. There is like no actual, barely any any acting in live interviews. And like everything about it just felt like this fucking happened. Yeah. It's disturbing, right? Megan yeah. is Missing feels like a film, but it feels like a film based on a real story. Yes. Right? So I think when you look at something like The House is October Built, the way they film it and how casual they are with it, they go by their real names in it. I think is what makes the difference too on how they react to each other. And I think that that is what draws a line. And if you're doing a real good mockumentary, like, like Mongo, for example, where the interview seems so authentic and so accurate. And I guess the question that Scott and I were thinking about is, is this ethical? Found it. Howard's Mill. Howard's Mill. Another one that's very similar to Lake Mongo with how it's filmed. Yeah. Makes you believe the interviews and stuff. So do we think this is ethical? Do we not? I'll answer first and then Scott can give his answer. I, I think it's, you know, I think all fair in love and war in media. I think we have a choice to watch whatever we want to watch and believe whatever we want to believe. You know, there's some pretty intense violent horror films out there that I've never even seen and probably won't. Um, and that's fine. And I think that if a director is able to convince us that maybe some kind of found footage is accurate, good on them. You know, if they're able to blur the line between fantasy and reality, then they have every right to do that. And I don't necessarily think that we can be upset or offended by that. I always look at it like this. If I don't like something, I can shut it off. If something upsets right. me, I can shut it off. And, and you know, I don't need to tell other people about it. Like if maybe Scott and I talk about it, you know, if someone watches something and it doesn't bother them. Like I've hysterically never watched Clockwork Orange because I can't get through the opening rape scene. Mm, like I, I can't. Yeah. You know, it upsets me and I don't, and, but if someone said to me, Clockwork Orange is my favorite film, I'd be like, great, awesome. Yeah. I just, I just couldn't handle it. And that's me. And I have no problem admitting that. Like I have no problem saying I could not handle that. It upset me. I don't want to do that. And I don't, you know, I don't care what the person thinks of me and I don't care that they like that film. Who am I to judge? Like it's a movie. It's, it's supposed to be art form come to life. So that's my thoughts on it. I don't think there, there is a problem with blurring the line because that's what we get into media for. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much right there with you. Uh, the only thing um, I find like just 
it might be a little bit uh, too much is with Be My Cat, a film for Anne. Mm. The fact that this was like made about a person that is obsessed with a real life celebrity that everybody knows, like Anne Hathaway. If, Good like, because because she may see this and then be fearful, fearful for her life because of it. Because, you know, you don't know if this is like, okay, this film, this director made this film, but is he legit about this? Unless, like, he had absolutely. Unless he had reached out to her ahead of time and said, hey, I'm doing this type of film. I'm going to use your name and blah, 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 blah. But, like, I think that's about where it's, like, almost kind of sort of crosses the line. But even then, like, yeah. it's, it's effective. Like, But, like, I could see, like, you yeah. know, I could see Anne Hathaway being terrified of this dude because of this movie. You know what? You make a valid point, and I haven't seen this film, and I think that's true. When you're when you're going to bring somebody else in as a subject of your film and do something creepy like this, you have to be careful of what their impressions would be, especially for actresses and actors and people that are media stars, because people do stalk them. Yeah. You know, and it does happen, and it is scary. And I, I think you make a really good point there, Scott. I agree. I think that would be the exception to the rule. I think something like Mo- like Mongo or Howard's Mill or the Houses of October Built or the Blair Witch Project, where, you know, it does a pretty better, like, it does a better job of blurring whether this is real or not, mm-hmm. um, is fine. Like, I think that's yeah. fine because you're you're still, like, even if you're using your own name, like Scott and I were to make a final footage of us doing something stupid, then it's Scott and I choosing to do that. But if Scott and I are, you know, obsessing over somebody, like, even as much as we joke about Tim Davis and Daniel from the horror for dummies, like, if we were stalking Tim Davis, like, that would not be okay. Right. Like, we made a whole movie about, like, no, Tim is our friend, so I'm sure he would find it hilarious and we would check with them beforehand but like you know you're you shouldn't be blurring the line with somebody who could be affected negatively without their consent right yeah like because you know like Blair Witch and all these other found footage that's how these movies work is when they blend reality with fiction yes where this is uh blending reality with reality in a way yeah no you make a valid point you really do like i'm kind of curious to see what the other two movies are in this trilogy of his like to see if it's still tied into like anything with anne hathaway or anything but and i do want to do some research to see if like there was any like talks with her before making this film or if there was like i'm gonna go with no yeah because i'll say it's definitely an independent film like, I don't know. And she probably like, who's this fucking creep? And maybe that's what motivated him to do it. It could be, yeah. Maybe this is a big fuck you, Anne movie. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could be. Right? And I'll have to watch it. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to watch it because I wanted to watch it before we recorded tonight. But because we're recording a little bit earlier than usual, um, I didn't get a chance to. But I think it does, you know, beg the question. Um, and, you know, I, and I'm not upset. Or like, I'm not offended when people find out I thought Blair Witch was real. I was fucking 14 years old. Of course I did. Right. Well, like, I, thought I, it was, I thought it was real until I actually went to the theaters. Like, oh, I thought see? it was, like, building up with all the marketing and yeah. the fake documentary they made beforehand and all that. I was like, oh, shit, this is real. I don't feel embarrassed by that. Why should no. I? Like, we didn't have the internet marketing as work. well as we do back that we have now. And, like, you know, you you learn and you go at different things. I don't pretend to be cool and be like, oh, no, I didn't know. Like, why? Why? Why do that? Who cares, right? Like, there's still stuff I don't know to this day. I was actually just saying to my girlfriends, I really hate it when someone can't say, oh, I don't know a lot about that subject. It really fucking bugs yeah. me because there's lots of subjects I don't know anything about. And if right. I don't know anything about it, I don't comment on it. Or I'll say, oh, I only know a little bit about that. And I have no problem somebody telling me about it. Like, it doesn't upset me. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It'll, it'll be interesting to see how found footage continues to develop, especially as we get kind of to the age now where it's uh, it's harder to make those sneaky like films like even the houses that october built was made in like what 2014 or something like that yeah i think so it was made a while ago and i watched uh, another found footage recently called hashtag screamer and it was basically about like a website that runs videos like youtube and then like they end up getting this guy who's a killer that's submitting videos and shit and even then you could tell it was like obviously like a movie but it was it was a cool concept so We'll see. I think found footage still definitely has its place. And I think that it's a great way to make indie films. And I think besides the line you referred to, I think blur the fucking reality and fiction as much as you want. You might get some people's attention. Yeah, I was saying like, I mean, and sometimes you may get the unwanted attention, but the unwanted attention also attracts the wanted attention. 
uh, what is it? No, no, what is it? No, there's no such thing as bad media. Yeah, exactly. Something like that, right? I mean, I'm sure that helped fucking Cannibal Holocaust like crazy. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm sure Adam Levine is going to sell more music this week. Right? Right or last week. And, like, honestly. Damn, your body's absurd. <laughs> yeah, right? All the memes. Anyway, yeah, I, I think that shit's funny. I don't, I don't know. I think it's funny when people get shocked that, like, celebrities cheat on each other. I don't, I think most people aren't monogamous. I think some right? people are, and that's great, but, like, I'm like get the fuck out of here like, <laughs> right. especially especially celebrities i don't like who cares but fuck those memes are funny oh my god they're great very very entertaining who knows maybe this will up his maroon five cells who knows maybe he'll get uh hey beyonce and jc made a whole fucking album about his cheating and fucking mark mass marketed the fuck out of that so that's true you know what fucking media and if you can't if you know something bad make money out of it right exactly so but yeah so that concludes our friday nightmares episode we will be back again in two weeks we're we're doing pretty good we're modifying when we record so we can stay on schedule we're adjusting our show as we go so we don't take too much time um and that we're able to kind of fit in our recordings where we can so yep and this episode may come out a little after friday just because you know i am on vacation so it just depends on how much time i have to edit but yeah, I you will... may be too busy to be slipping, snip, slip, sipping pina coladas. Yeah. <laughs> right. So uh, I will try to get this out like uh, as soon as I can. But yeah, it all just depends. Yeah, you do you, Scotty. It's okay. We accept you for who you are. Oh, thanks. Yeah, we got you. But um, as always, thank you for listening. You can find us on the Legion Podcast Network. We're under the Kill the Cast feed, which you are obviously probably listening to us on right now. But please check out our, our other podcast on Legion Network. We got some great ones. We got Sickle Sue Magic Podcast. Uh, we have, oh my gosh, I blanked on some of the other uh, ones. Uh, Cinema the Psyops. Cinema Psyops. Uh, some great shows. Two Cinema drink- Beef cinema beef we have some great shows that you can listen to uh please check them out please check out our legion podcast friends so and also we are on patreon so if for some reason you haven't heard of us being on patreon there's tons of great stuff you can get for two three dollars a month you can get early access to shows you can put your name in a draw for uh what is it Pro- tokens i guess you could say to get uh i'm getting it's getting late at night so i'm forgetting what he was drawing like for codes 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 for codes different stuff. downloads and stuff like that so if you're not a member of patreon yet scotty has one question for you what are you waiting for <laughs> what are you waiting for what are you waiting for there will come a day scotty where you will do that for the last time on a friday nightmares episode and i will be so heartbroken i'll probably be crying because we'll be retiring we'll be like, what are you waiting for <laughs> <laughs> we're not podcasting anymore they finally kicked us off the network um <laughs> Anyway, so thank you as always for joining us. We'll see you again in a couple of weeks as we enjoy Spooky Days in. Um, and <laughs> Scott and I share all the shenanigans we'll be getting up to. So happy early birthday, Scotty. Thank you. Much love to you and the most popular member of this Friday Nightmares podcast. I hope Aww. you get tons of dick pics. Um, oh, you know, I hope I do too. Oh, man. <laughs> Fingers crossed. God willing. I don't, um, care, I don't care about the tip pics. I want the dick pics. <laughs> You're like all the dicks. Give me all Give the me dick. all that dick. <laughs> Gummy dicks actually stop fucking loves gummies. So oh, I do. Yeah. <laughs> if they're sour gummy dicks, fuck yeah. Oh man, you'll be Scott's best friend. Um. So yeah, Scotty. We'll I will literally Scott. choke on dick. <laughs> If he's still alive, Scotty will. You know, <laughs> Scotty, there's I, I have had that happen to me before. It is awkward. You gotta make sure you relax the gag reflex. Yeah, my gag re- reflex does not work that well. So uh, uh see, lucky for me it does, but no one cares about that, do they? Because they just care about Scott. So <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, i'm just kidding scott i hope you have a great birthday and i can't wait to celebrate with you when you come out thank you i can't wait to it's gonna be so much fucking fun and uh, i don't know do you want to see us out finally from this shit show yeah what are y'all doing here get the fuck <laughs> out oh, oh sorry I'm, I'm sorry i, I was I'm, a, I'm in a different mood right now uh until next time kitties unpleasant dreams see you guys on the flip side <laughs>